the, the first thing is that I'm going to do just a really quick intro. Some of you know of me and the work that we do, some of you don't. I'll do a quick intro, um, and then we're basically going to be diving into key tips for creative business owners who have over 10,000 followers. So it's very specific. We work with a lot of people with a range of followers. We work with people who don't have 10,000 followers plus, um, but we do work with a range of people who do. We've worked with people up to two, three, four hundred thousand followers, and a lot of people in the kind of 10, 50k range as well, which is great. Um, after that, what we're going to do is we're going to be getting some of you to share some tips as well. So there's going to be some opportunities. You all have a lot of knowledge from what you've created, so there'll be an opportunity to share. Feel free to use the chat. The chat is for conversations, connections, all of those things, even just commenting on the things that I'm sharing. Um, and then what we'll be doing is a QA and a at the end. So we'll be allowing some time for you to ask questions, meant to be based off what I'm sharing, or this might be something that you're trying to figure out in your creative business. So uh, think of those questions, feel free to write it down if you have one now, or write it down during the session. And then when it comes to the Q&A time, I will just get you to pop that question into the chat. So. Love it. Welcome to just, if you've just joined us. So really excited about what we're going to be diving into. So I'm going to start with just a really quick overview about myself, give you a bit of background, and then we're going to be diving into the webinar and the, the tips around your creative business and helping you grow that. So my name is Logan. I am a New Zealander. You're texting the accent already if you have not spoken to me before. Um, but I don't live in New Zealand. I do travel uh, full time and run my business fully remotely. So I'm actually in Mexico City at the moment, about to head to Morocco for two weeks. I'm running an art retreat there, um, spending more time in Europe, uh, and I tend to spend a lot of time between Europe and the Americas. So uh, usually a month or two per location because I'm still running my business full time as well. So it's a real balance of lifestyle too. So my background is that I had my own creative business for 11 years within the live event space in New Zealand. Um, very early on in that journey, also started working with visual creatives, helping people like yourselves to grow their businesses. Basically, I was doing a lot of work with universities initially, and then I started thinking with all these amazing people who are like, oh, I don't need to go to university, but I need help with the business stuff. So I'm very passionate about the business side of visual creative businesses. So everyone we work with is very much in that visual creative space. Um, and it sort of morphed and changed over the years with programs and mentoring. Um, eventually, when I sold my creative company, my own creative company, I then went full time um, into running coaching, running a coaching business with visual creative. So, um, as I've kind of briefly mentioned, everyone is in the visual creative space, but there is a wide, wide range of people at different times within their business. We work with some people that are very early stage, trying to figure it out. We're working with people who have already been running their business for a while, maybe part time or full time and they want to grow their revenue. And we also work with people like yourself who tend to have these larger followings as well, typically 10,000 followers plus. So quite a wide range of people there, but really it's very much in the visual creative space. A lot of people who are illustrators, graphic designers, uh, some interior designers and other areas of visual creative within that, um, muralists as well. So look, um, what I'm gonna be doing today is really diving into some topics around how to build a, how to really grow your, your income when you have a larger following. So just before I dive into that, I'm going to share just in the chat here. Um, we are doing a bit of a giveaway as part of this. So if this is something where you'd be interested in maybe jumping on a freebie coaching call with myself or Paul from my team, uh, fill in the survey and pop it there in the chat. We'll be sending an email out afterwards as well. So take five to 10 minutes to fill that in. Um, there's a chance there, even if you don't end up getting on a call, we'll be giving some, some free business feedback to everyone that fills that in. Honestly, it's just an awesome survey to do because you'll learn a bunch of stuff about where you're at and what your blocks are. Um, and then we'll be basically giving out a few freebie coaching calls to people that fill that in. Um, we'll be basically just picking and choosing a bunch of people that we can get on calls with. So if that's something that interests you, great, fill it in. Um, we would love to hear more about where you're at and what you need help with as well. Awesome. Okay, so. We're going to be jumping into it. So the first thing uh, I do want to do is get everyone here to share their Instagram in the chat because part of what I want to do is get people connecting. I don't want you to just share your hashtag. I want you to literally grab, go and get the H the HTM, HTTP um, link and then paste it in there because that means that it's very easy for everyone here to basically just click through and follow each other. This is such a nice opportunity to connect with some like-minded people. I'm definitely aware, looking at a few uh, in different faces here, some of you already know each other, which is awesome, but part of building business is getting connecting with more 
similar like-minded people. So um, very cool opportunity. Drop it in there. I love it. Thanks so much for dropping them in. Um, and yeah, get connected, right? Connect each other. You can DM each other saying, hey, it was great to connect on that call. Um, perhaps you can do that after the call today because community is such a powerful part of business as well. Awesome. So yeah, post in your, your link there. And just a reminder, if you ever on a webinar like this, don't ever put your ad tag because it's such a nightmare for anyone else to like copy and paste and try and find you. Just do what you did there because it's all clickable. So please do go through and click um, other people and get to connecting there as well. All right, we're going to jump into it. So look, um, the, the basic foundation here is that we've worked with a whole bunch of people over the years in different areas of business. We've worked with a lot of people who have 10,000 followers plus on Instagram, right up to three, four, 100,000 followers as well. And what I've basically seen is that there are some different things at play when you have these larger audiences. There's different opportunities. There's also different risks as well when you're trying to or are building a business. So I'm going to be sharing some of those tips and strategies specifically for people who are in this space here. Now, one of the biggest things we know in business is that is you need enough people to know you exist. Like this is out of any type of business, whether it's creative business or any sort of business, is that you know you need enough people, and I'll say enough of the right people to know you exist and are willing to spend money on what you do. That, that's one of the challenges and, and essentially it's marketing. So we, we work with a lot of people and we speak to a lot of people who are very good at the creative side of the, what they do, their creative stuff, but they really struggle with the business stuff. Right, so yes, the business stuff is the, the boring numbers and the taxes and stuff like that, but it's also the marketing side too. Now, something I wanted to acknowledge about everyone here is that you have a piece of that puzzle figured out already by building a lot of followers. And that's a very unique position to be in because, as I mentioned, one of the biggest struggles is having enough people know you exist. Now, you might be in a position, depending on where you're at, you might be like, great, I've got 10,000 followers, 50,000 followers, 200,000 followers. There's a nice range for some people here. Um, so you figured out part of that equation, but I'm sure you're all here because you're like, there's still something I'm missing, Odin. Like, I haven't quite figured out all of it. I haven't really figured out how to leverage this following without destroying my following and being salesy and overwhelming your followers and making them feel like you're just selling to them. There is a balance to be made, but I think it's important to recognize that this idea of building an audience, getting enough people know you exist, is you're actually a part of the way path. You're a step up towards a lot of people. So we really notice that you're able to do things a little bit differently to a lot of people. So I'm going to be really going through some tips and strategies around what you can do to leverage that following and to be aware of the tips, strategies, opportunities, but also the risks. So we are going to dive into this. The first thing I do want to point out is this idea of your audience being a massive right? If you have over 10,000 followers, your audience is a huge asset. Whether you believe it now or not, you might be like, oh, yeah, it's kind of okay, but it is. And I have many conversations with people who have these, these large audiences that are like, oh, yeah, it's kind of okay. And I'm like, no, no, this is an asset. Now, unfortunately, when something's an asset, an opportunity, it also means it's a risk, right? So for probably everyone here, one of the biggest risks for you and your business and growing your business could actually be your following. The fact that you have this big following and you could pretty much lose it at any time. Now, I know from many conversations and working with many people, large, large, large audiences, this is terrifying, right? I'm sure there's a feeling of anxiety in some of you already of like, this is a risk slogan, I worry about it all the time that you could lose that following. So just be upfront, good reminder, like you do not own your Instagram following. You could lose it tomorrow, something could happen, it could get hijacked, Face, uh, Facebook meta itself could just shut it down for no reason. These things do happen. I think we're all aware of people in our own networks that have built followings and then lost them for some reason. Now, that means that, yes, it's a great asset, but it's also potentially your biggest risk. So what I'm going to briefly talk about is what can you do to reduce this risk? Now, some of the stuff I'm going to share with you all, some of it you might be like, Logan, I know this stuff. Right, let's think about, you might know some things, but have you taken action on them? We see that a lot with clients we work with. It's, yes, there's a lot of great knowledge, but how do we make sure we take action on them? So I just want you to think about that as we move through this, and maybe some action will come out of this session today. Or we're going to be sharing some stuff that you won't know about, and it'll be good to lean into those things. So in terms of tips and strategies around protecting your following and reducing this risk, 
the first one, pretty much the most, the biggest one I recommend is have a secondary account. So a secondary Instagram backup account, you see people doing that. Now, I'm not saying build another full account with tens of thousands of followers needed for something to put all this effort in because you actually want to put the core of your effort into your core account. What I'm saying is spend some of your energy on having that secondary account at least running in the background, even if they're not connected. Now, there's lots of ways to do this. It could just be personal, personal. Right, you just share a bit more about what you do personally then. Maybe you only post on it once a week, once a month. That is not something you're actively posting on. Maybe you occasionally talk about your creativity and artwork, but it's a bit more personal. Now, you could just invite your friends and family and visit a, that is a private account. Private account. That's, you could do it. Well, you could have it as more open. What this does is several things. What it means is that if you do lose your account or you lose access to your account, you've got another account that's already operating that you're about to build up rather than starting from zero. Now, what we tend to see is that accounts that are older that you've been posting for for longer are easier to build back up and are easier to get followers in. So even if you just have a backup account with 100, 200, 500 followers, you don't post on it much. If you did lose your larger following, you've got something that you can leverage and get underway. Maybe you can move people across to that. You might not have access to the account, you have access to the followers. So you might be able to message some of them. You might be able to contact people if you have an emailing list saying, hey, what I've lost my account for now, I'm going to be posting here on the secondary thing instead. Other ways to do it, it could, some people have different business accounts, some people have other ways they do it. I've, we had one client who had like a subset account for a different part of her business. So she had part of the business, which was an education part, and for other influencers, and she had a subset account for that that she shared on her core account. If you're interested in hearing more about this stuff, I'm going to be speaking more about that here. So there's lots of ways to do this, but everyone here, I encourage you to at least have some sort of secondary account that you're posting on, even just occasionally. Once again, I don't want it to be a distraction. The core account, we all struggle to keep enough content going on those core accounts often. This is something as a secondary back, backup as well. So I'm going to show that. I'm just going to turn off my headphones because I hear there's a little bit of static happening. So just bear with me while I do that. Hopefully my audio will be a bit better. All right, can you just give me a thumbs up if that sounds a little bit better and everyone can hear me okay? Amazing, fantastic, thank you everyone. Cool, awesome. So, you know, this, this is something we really do need to think about is how can we protect the thing that is a big risk. Look, the, the next thing I'm gonna share with you is have a newsletter, right? Those of you that already have a newsletter, you're probably like, yeah, Logan, like, of course. Those of you that don't, this is something that you should definitely be doing. Okay, now we speak to a lot of people. I'm often quite surprised when we, we work with people, particularly with larger followings that don't have a newsletter. So I know there's some of you here, you'll either not have a newsletter or you'll be like, oh, Logan, I barely use it. I have a newsletter, but no one's on it. It's got like 50 people on it. So this is to encourage you to really build up that as a way to reduce your risk. There's other values of the newsletter that I'm going to be going over with you as well. But really, really important to note that this is something that can reduce your risk. Once again, lots of ways to build a newsletter, but think about this idea of what we call lead magnets. A lead magnet, if you haven't heard of this term, is something which is like a downloadable freebie. It's all very well to have like, uh, you know, on your, your website or on your Instagram, like a link that says, join my newsletter, right? That you'll get some people joining. You probably won't get lots of people joining that way. People need some sort of incentive to join. And that's where having something downloadable, you can link it up to your newsletter platform. Typically, it's something that's free. It's a downloaded, a downloadable cheat sheet. It's a, it's a checklist of something. It's some tips for your followers. So the idea is that they put in their email address, they get sent this freebie download, this PDF you've created, or sometimes it could be a piece of your artwork. Some people do, do uh, you know, a, a digital download, a digital print, and in return, you're getting the email address, they sign up to the newsletter. The great thing is they can sign up at any point, right? So that's kind of one of the beautiful things. If they're not interested, that's fine. They can unsubscribe, which is cool. So, so this is something you can do because you suddenly own those email addresses. Whereas we know you don't own your Instagram following. So this is where what you ideally want to do is have a place where your Instagram followers could also be signing up to a newsletter as well. Another way to follow you. Look, see if you can be sharing something once a month on your newsletter. 
or even once a quarter. All right. And look, if you can do more, great. There can be a whole strategy around that, but at least have something at the bare minimum, which is a newsletter that you're building up, you're building your followers up over time. You could end up with multiple lead magnets as well. So I know I'm not diving super deep into the strategy here. It's something that obviously we end up doing a lot more in our programs, but just really encouraging you to, A, if you haven't got a newsletter, set one up, get some lead magnets going, or B, if you do have one, make sure that's something you consistently use as well. Even if it's just a small number of people, over time you can build that up as well because that's something you own. Um, quite a few people here, I'm sure many of you have secondary social platforms. Some of you here, I'm sure, have big platform or big followings on other platforms, right? We've got a client who has like 300,000 followers on Instagram and then like 500,000 followers on YouTube, which is super cool. We've got some other clients who have uh, followers on TikTok, which is fantastic as well. Okay, great. The, the core thing here that I'm saying is it's actually a good idea to have some secondary places that people can follow you outside of just Instagram. Now, this comes with a risk in itself in that you can get really distracted. You can get overwhelmed with trying to post on different platforms. We're all struggling to find time. I'm not saying you need to suddenly post full on on TikTok or be putting videos on YouTube or being on, on Facebook itself. I'm saying that it's a good idea to have some secondary platforms in place. That means that you can spread that risk by getting some of your followers to follow you in different places as well. If you lose your Instagram following, great. That means that you've actually got somewhere else you can engage with those people to build your following back up again. It might kind of like the, the kind of like what we talked about before with say the newsletter, it might be something you do infrequently or like the secondary Instagram platform. Maybe you do have a Facebook business page. Maybe you have a TikTok, maybe you have a YouTube. Um, account, but you're just posting there once a week or once a month, and you're getting some followers there. So that's a thing to reduce your risk here. Once again, most of us can actually not manage multiple large followings. I'm not saying build a huge following on another platform, but at least build a small following because it reduces that risk if you lose your core thing. Um, now, something that quite a few people have been talking about recently um, is the Instagram blue tick. Can you just raise your hand? I can see everyone here. If you raise your hand, if you have the Instagram blue tick, the verified tick operating. All right. I think there might be a couple of people here. Now, look, this is something that if you have a large following, I do think it's actually worth considering actually paying for that. It's actually a relatively small amount that you can pay per month. But what it does is several things is it actually helps you protect your biggest ass asset. Now, I know we hate paying money for things that we feel like should be free, but actually there is some good value in that blue tick because A, you're going to get a bit more support. You're less likely to get hacked, or if you do, you've got some support to get that all sorted out if you lose access, right? So there is a higher level of support from Meta, from Facebook itself, if you have that blue tick, right? So if this is a big asset for you, therefore you can pay actually a relatively small amount of money to do that. Um, the other thing that the blue tick does do is it builds more trust. We know that business is built on no like, and trust, and we want your followers to know that this is a verified you, or is this a fake you? Is this a fake account? So it just gives a bit of extra verification. It builds a bit more trust within your followers as well. Right now, I'm not saying you have to do this, and this could just be something you trial for a few months as well, and, and sort of see, is this something that you think is worthwhile? Um, has anyone mentioned it? What are other people talking about? Does there seem to be some value? I, you know, I've, I know there's some resistance to it. I totally get that. I think we all have resistance to, to paying some of these mega platforms this money, but we've got to really think about, once again, this is an asset. How can we protect that asset? Well, this is one way you can actually pretty easily do it. We can pay a relatively small amount of money to have that Instagram verified blue tick. Um, so that's something to definitely consider in a way to really reduce those risks. Right, there's a lot of other things you can do around reducing risk, but these are some of the core things I've covered. Okay, I'm going to jump into the next thing here, which is basically around how can you monetize your audience in a non-salesy way? Because I think... Like this is a big fear that a lot of people have, right? You've all built these amazing followings through your awesome creative work. And I'm sure you've all noticed anytime you try and promote something or sell something to your following, your engagement is like terrible, right? It's just a really common thing. And firstly, yeah, that's the reality of it is that, yeah, only a small amount of people will be interested in that and people will glaze over. So there is a bit of a balance to be had there. Some people basically won't sell at all to their audience and therefore they find, well, they don't actually have a business here. So that's the balance between these two things is going, hey, your audience is an asset. 
we want to figure out ways where we can use that audience to leverage and grow your business. But also we don't want to do it in an overly salesy way because we might lose our biggest asset, our audience, because people disengage. We've seen it before. We've seen people who just start selling and promoting constantly on their Instagram. It gets overwhelming and their engagement levels drop significantly. People stop following them. People mute them, all of those things there. So that's something we need to be aware of. So there's a few different things you can do to monetize your audience in a non-salesy way. I've already talked about one of them. Building a newsletter is actually a pretty easy one because you, know, you can kind of think about your newsletter as it's really a place where your like super followers, your super fans, your hardcore fans can actually hang out with you more. So if they're interested in hearing more about you than you're sharing on Instagram and maybe even hearing about the ways that you can support them or the things that you're selling, this is a place that you can do that on your newsletter without so much doing it on your Instagram. So right, you can use some of those strategy I met, strategies I mentioned, sharing lead magnets. You could even consider running a webinar as a way to grow your newsletter. And then what you can do is use that as a place to share more about yourself, the work you do, and maybe even some of the things that you're promoting or selling as well. Once again, the beautiful thing there is if people are not interested, they can unsubscribe. Part of building a newsletter is every time you will post something, every time you will actually send out a newsletter, you will have people unsubscribe. And that's okay. It means that those people are not interested. You want to have people that are interested in your newsletter. So look, that's one way to do it. Um, would really encourage that once again as a place. Look, the really cool thing about newsletters as well is you can do uh, newsletter segmentation. So I'm not going to go too deep into this. It's a bit more complex in terms of the subject, but you can basically separate your newsletter into different lists. So when people sign up, it could be off the lead magnet they download, or it could be to do with what they fill in when they sign up. You can actually break that list into different groups. So it could be, for example, other artists and creatives. That could be a tagged thing. And that means that you can send them a specific email or email newsletter. And then you might have another one, which is more of your clients or more people that you might be working with or collaborating with partnerships. You can actually break that down. Look, if you haven't done a newsletter before and you haven't started a newsletter, this stuff can actually feel pretty overwhelming. So you could just start with one newsletter and always segment it later. But this is something to consider doing because it can be a really good way to really monetize your audience in a non-salesy way. Um, something else that you can do is really get to know your audience, right? So this is, we, we think, okay, Brian, I've got, you know, 20,000 followers, like, okay, fantastic. Well, you, a lot of people don't tend to know who is in the audience, right? It's kind of hard to know. You've got all these thousands, thousands of followers. It's even hard to scroll through Instagram and see them all. So there's a few different things that you can do here. One of them is that you can start to ask more about them and their needs through stories. Right. So you've seen the different surveys you can do. What are the things they're interested in hearing about from you? What are the things they're interested in posting? Is there ways you can help them? Would they be interested in buying courses from you? Would they be interested in buying products? You can actually use stories in lots of creative ways without it being too overwhelmingly salesy. So that some people don't actually promote anything they're selling in their posts. You can, it's definitely an option, but stories is another place. And one way to do that is just to find out more about your audience within that as well. Something else that I'll share around this is that you can actually do a bit of a mini audit of who is in your following. Now, if you've got thousands and thousands of followers, this can be kind of hard to do. I'm not saying do it with everyone. I'm saying do it with a bit of a subset. Have a look maybe at a recent post and take a few hours to really go through and just see who the people are that are following you in that. Go through, check their links, right? They've engaged with you. They've liked to post recently. We'll see who they are. Go check, check out what they're up to and maybe even consider actually sending some direct messages to get to know some of your audience. And this is something that you can do as a way to learn about who is in your audience. What does that audience look like? We have people say all the time, oh, Logan, yeah, I've built this big following, but everyone in that following is other creatives and other artists. And that's part of what happens. It's part of what you attract you would probably be surprised who else is in there as well. There is usually people in your following that may want to uh, commission something from you, may want to collaborate with you, partner with you, work with you, license from you, et cetera. So once again, you probably can't go through your whole following and you need to be a little bit careful of doing that because Instagram does have some restrictions around how many things you can view. You can't just scroll, scroll, scroll and send a zillion DMs because you might get restricted. And that's something we want to avoid. But this is something you can do as a bit of an audit of who is there. That can be quite surprising. 
getting to know your audience means you can get to know how you can help them, the things you might be able to sell them as well. Once again, I've mentioned stories. Stories is a place that you can actually consider selling. If you are going to be doing more promotional posts on your Instagram, really just it's about balance. And that balance might be one in 10 or one in 20 posts is a good rule of thumb for how often something would be more of a like promotion-y, salesy type thing. And just be aware that, yeah, when you do that post, you're probably going to get much lower engagement. And that's actually okay because it's not actually for everyone. I know it's frustrating to see something with much less engagement, but you're still getting a lot of people seeing that as well. It's, it's kind of interesting. Often, you know, we work with people with these big followings, say 50,000 followers. And sometimes they'll say, Logan, I did this post, you know, only 500 people even like the post. And I'm used to thousands of people liking a post. And I'm like, that's 500 people that have seen these awesome things that you're up to. It's still a lot of people. Right? These are the numbers that a lot of people who have these smaller followings dream of. We often can really lose, lose touch on what these numbers mean when we have these big followings as well. So it's just something to be very, very aware of. Um, the other thing you can do is to really utilize your following through for things like partnerships, collaborations, referrals, brand deals, affiliates. There's lots of different things that you can do there. And this is something that we've actually partnered up with some of our clients at time. At times, we've run webinars with them. We've done various things that are forms of partnerships. And it actually works really well because rather than them or us directly selling to the Instagram, we're actually giving something of value. So for example, you're on a webinar here. We sometimes run webinars where we partner with people we've worked with and actually promote a free webinar like this to the audience. And that's actually a really nice way because we're giving some value and then people that are actually interested in learning more, we can actually then potentially be working with them to help them grow their business. And we might be able to do some sort of referral agreement with the person that referred them, right? So there's lots of creative ways where you don't need to be doing direct sales, but you can be offering value to your clients as well. You could even consider, just like we're doing here, running your own webinar, a free webinar is a way to connect with your audience Maybe it's a way to get some more people on your email list, way for people to get to know you a little bit more, but it could also be a way for you to connect with people and help them as well, right? So there's lots of creative ways you can do this. Now, we've, we've also worked with people who have got into things like brand deals and uh, kind of more of a brand deal affiliate type thing where you're effectively promoting a business or a product. Um, on behalf of a, another business or brand. So this is certainly something you can consider when you have these larger followings. Of course, you need to be careful because you don't want to overwhelm your audience. You don't want them to feel like you're just constantly selling to them. So once again, thinking about that rule of thumb, one in 10 or one in 20 is kind of number of hosts you would consider around that. Um, but you could actually get paid, particularly if you have a larger following, you could get paid by a brand to promote some of their products. But make sure it's a product that your audience would actually be excited about, right? Rather than just like suddenly selling, a, you know, promoting a brand that has these cool, interesting toothbrushes that you think is interesting, but your audience is going to be like, what are you doing right now? Right? So it would be things that your audience would be interested in. Maybe it's partnering with an art supplies brand, for example. And often the cool thing with many of these brand partnerships is there might be a discount code through you. So you're actually offering value to the people that you're working with saying, hey, like there's this awesome thing here. I've tested it out. I've used this product. It's awesome. There's also a discount code. If you're interested, go check it out. If you're not, that's totally all good. So, you know, you can do it in a pretty light way, but make sure you test these products first. Don't just try and sell rubbish to people in your audience because they will know, right? And just find the balance with these things as well. But it's certainly something that you can consider, but you've just got to find the balance in this as well. And just make sure you're very aware when it comes to these brand partnerships of what you need to do around Instagram to make sure it's actually done legally. And you might need to be tagging them and you might need to share that it is a it is actually a brand deal so that your audience are aware of that as well. Cool. So next thing I'm going to jump into around this is really this idea of what, what can you do to leverage your following even more? Because you've all built this following. What are some of the extra tactics and tips and things that you could actually do with that following? So I'm going to kind of share a few extra tips and ideas. There might be some stuff here that you find really interesting. First one I've already briefly talked about, you could run a webinar as a way to connect with your audience, to offer them more value and to actually leverage your following. So something that a good friend of mine, those of you that know Kat Koch, um, 
her and I run retreats together. So this is actually why I'm going to Morocco in two weeks. Kat and I are running a, an art retreat, an art an entrepreneur retreat, bit of a mouthful, um, in Morocco. We're super excited about it. Last year we did Spain, the year before we did France. Now, when we originally ran our first retreat, we actually ran a free webinar Q&A session that we promoted to both of our audiences. Kat has a big audience. Um, and basically we said, hey, we're running this free webinar. There's going to be a chance to connect with both Logan and Kat. We're going to be answering questions about creative business. Plus, we're going to be sharing about this really cool retreat that we're running. So we basically used the webinar as a way to really offer something for free and valuable, but also be able to share about something that was a premium paid offer, right? It's three to $5,000 to come to this retreat. So, you know, it's not for everyone. And that was great, right? We had this webinar, we had like 100 people attended, a bunch of people brought questions along, and it was actually a really nice platform where we could really share in a very non-salesy way this thing that we were up to, right? So we actually spent three quarters of the session Q&A, sharing creative business tips, connecting with our audience in a very genuine way. And then we said, hey, we just, we're really excited to share with you. We're launching this. This is actually a pre-launch for this as well. Here's the information if you're interested. Great. And we just shared a little bit more details, but you can see here, we did it in a pretty non-salesy way. People were aware in advance that we were going to be sharing some information about on this retreat as well. And honestly, it was great because we got a bunch of signups off the back of that webinar. So there was something we were able to do is leverage Cats following in particular to actually have a free webinar in the first place, get people along to, and then really be able to have this, this great thing that we were doing. Um, something linked to that that I'll, I'll share about is that we really encourage you, particularly people who have these big followings, to have some form of what we call a premium offer. And we often talk to a lot of people who don't have premium offers, right? There's offers, there's things that you're sharing that are maybe $50, $100, even a few hundred dollars. And what I'm encouraging you to do is consider having something that is a very premium offer in what you do. And when I say premium, I'm actually defining this as something that would generally be probably over a thousand US dollars or a thousand euros. Um, and it would maybe be a one-off thing. So for example, we helped one of our clients who had a couple of hundred thousand followers to actually develop a premium offering, a premium program course offering uh, to actually help people within her network. And, and she, you know, I remember she actually said to us, she said, well, Logan, like I've got this big following and this audience and I've got this $50 kind of mini course offering. Like that, that's, that's great. It's going really well, but I don't think people are going to pay $1,200 for something more involved. And I was like, how about we just test it out? Like you could throw some stuff in your stories about this. You could do a little survey about this thing that you're building and see if there's some interest. And I was like, look, you've got like 200,000 followers. We only need like 10 people to buy this thing, to be interested. In. And that's over $10,000 just like that. So she was like, all right, we'll give it a go. And what she then did is she basically pitched this idea in her stories to her audience. Hey, I'm going to be running this, this premium course offering. Here's a survey you can fill in if you're interested. The survey had information about the price point and it basically had a question saying, look, is this something that you'd basically be willing to sign up to now um, or later? And she had a whole lot of people said, very interested now, 30, and she then pitched the course to them soon afterwards and developed the course. So two weeks later, after we discussed this idea, she had $30,000 in her bank account because of this. Now, I know it's not always as easy as that. It's kind of the dream, right? You come up with an idea, you execute it, you share it with the audience, boom, $30,000 in the bank account. But she basically had 20 something people showed interest. It's like only 20 people out of like 200,000 people in her following, but she had a premium offer. It was the same with our, with, with our retreats that we were running when Kat and I were discussing. She's got a big following. She's got 70,000 followers plus. We thought, well, we think there's a portion of her audience who will be willing to spend three to $5,000 and fly to Europe uh, depending on where they are in the world. A lot of people come from North America, some people from within Europe, but actually fly there, take time off and come to that and pay three to $5,000 for a luxury retreat. That was kind of our pump. We thought there would be some people in her audience. Guess what? We were right. So we ran it in France. Last year, we ran in Spain and we've just got our Morocco one all sold out retreats that we're super excited about. So we'd really consider you to think about having some form of premium offering um, within what you do as well. I'm going to share a couple of quick tips and then we're going to be jumping into Q&A time because I want to allow some good time for that um, and things that might pop up. Um, something I share, and this is something I was talking to one of our clients about the other day, was this idea of leveraging your following for building more trust in other forms of promotion you do. 
I know it feels like kind of a bit there, eh, but if you are sending cold emails to potential clients you might work with, write what your following is on that email. I know it feels a bit braggy, but the problem with cold email is that people end up getting a lot of cold email. And how do you get out from the noise? Well, you share something like this that makes them take notice because they're much more willing to work with you, much more likely to work with you if you have this large following because you're probably going to be part of their marketing strategy as well, right? As in they will have some way where they're connecting with your audience too. So that's something to think about. Like once again, I don't talk to many people about this and it feels a bit, uh, you know, I have 200,000 followers. Like it feels a bit silly and braggy, but it is the thing that will get you noticed. It can be subtle just saying, you know, this is my Instagram account here. I have 10,000 followers. I have 20,000 followers. Be pretty brief, nice mention. They're much more likely to click the link of your Instagram account, include the link um, and potentially reply to you, work with you, collaborate, license your work, whatever it is that you want to do. So that's just kind of a quick extra tip that I wanted to share as well. Um, look, a couple of other things. Business is hard. Creative business is hard. The thing that we see again and again is that many people are amazing at the creative stuff. You're good at your craft. And those of you here, you've built this following. Fantastic. That's amazing. Often it's the business skills that people lack. If I could tell you the amount of conversations I have had with people who have said, Logan, I built a following. You know, I think I'm pretty good at what I do creatively. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm struggling to turn this into revenue. I'm struggling to make a business work. I'm earning a few hundred dollars, maybe a few thousand, but I want to turn this into a sustainable business where I'm earning five to $10,000 per month and beyond consistently. Every single time I've had that conversation, the answer has been that they struggle with their business stuff because the business stuff ain't that interesting. In some cases, you're creative people. This is something that you do need to lean into. And this is actually why we end up working with a lot of people is helping them with the business side of their creative business. So yes, you might be amazing creatively what you do. You've built this amazing following, but you probably aren't that good at the business stuff, the marketing, the numbers, the finance, the tax, the boring stuff. Some of it isn't that boring. It's marketing can be super exciting when you, once you figure it out, but this is something to really think about as well. So you can't really skip that foundation of building a strong foundation in business. Now, I'm not saying you need to be an expert in business and world-class marketer or finance, maths expert. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that you probably need to bring your skills up to a higher level because that's probably the thing that's in your way. So that's something I really want to share. It's a very important part of this as well. Um, one more final thing is that you can have what we call tiny offers. Tiny offers are things that you're effectively selling for under $50. Just raise your hand if you have something right now that is you're selling for under $50. It's give, give me a bit of a wave if that's something in, in any way. Right, so a few people here. Absolutely, this is a good thing you can do. You have these big followings. If you do this, the do some numbers and go, well, even if it's a $5 offer, if I sell five of them, or if I sell 100 of them per month, well, that's $500. That's some okay income. That's a foundation. It's certainly something you can do with having a bigger following. You just need to be aware it's probably not going to be the only thing that is going to work. We work with lots of people, and one of the things that we constantly see is that having things that are under $50 only is not enough to build a sustainable business with reasonable income, even if you've got a big follow. It's quite surprising, right? We you know, often see that people with these huge followings, right? They've got these tiny offers, and you'd think, it's like you'd think if you've got 200,000 followers, you'll be able to build a really successful business, making good revenue off things that are $50 or less because you have all these followers. It's surprising how hard it is. It can certainly be part of the business, but what I'm sharing is you need to have other things. So we talk about this idea of what we call a valuable offer. A valuable offer is something that is $300 plus. I think everyone in business should have some form of valuable offer. Yes, sometimes it's client-facing work. Not always. It could be other things as well. We've seen lots of varieties of that, commissions. We've seen people um, have courses, programs, lots of different things. Um, and then, as I mentioned, the other thing to keep in mind, yes, valuable offer, but also your premium offer, which is generally over $1,000. So a few good things to think about there. All right, cool. What I would love to do now is I would love everyone here to share one tip. Okay, I've shared a ton of tips today and, and strategies and ideas, but you all have knowledge as well. So what I would love everyone to do is share one thing 
what that has helped you either build your following or has helped you monetize your following, has helped you grow your business. I would love to see what people have got here. It might be reiterating something I've already shared. That's great. It might be something where you're like, Logan, you haven't shared this thing. Everyone here needs to know. This is a community I really want you all to help each other um, as well. So what are the things that you can share that can help other people here? I'm going to read them out as they go through, but everyone can have a go at one thing. I know it can be a bit intimidating with a group like this, but just think of one thing that's helped you because it might help someone else here as well. Cool. So Brittany's sharing cheerleading others. Community, essential, right? You've got you've built a wee mini community here. You've been able to follow each other on Instagram as well from the early on in the session. Grow, build, following, hashtag strategy. Yeah, absolutely, Erin. I absolutely love that. Is building your following, as you know, is a big asset. It's something you want to keep doing. By the way, everyone, I get it. Instagram can be frustrating. It's annoying. The algorithm keeps changing. But what we've seen is that some people give up or they disengage with their following. And because they're, they're overwhelmed by it, they're finding it's changing those things there. It's going to keep changing. That's the reality of it. But you need to keep working through strategies of how to move with the change as well. Um, love that, Jessica. So good to see you, by the way, Jess. Um, sending DMs to super fans. People I see who comment, interact with posts very often. I love that. So you're very aware of these super fans and taking time to direct message with your audience. I'm sure, Jessica, when, when you message people, they're like, wow, this is so cool. You're, you're messaging me and they feel really good. They are your super fans. Maybe they'll end up on your newsletter. Maybe they'll end up buying uh, something from you, your artwork, your creativity, your courses, those things there. So I love that you're taking time to do that. I know we can't do, if you've got 10, 20, 30,000 followers or plus, you can't DM everyone, of course, right? But it is a very important thing to do is to engage with them. Other things here, uh, consistency and posting. Hey, Kenzie, I love it. So, so good. Consistency and posting. I know it's hard. As we mentioned, there's a lot of different things here. It can be very overwhelming. Consistency again there. I love it, Katie. Fantastic. Greta, consistent post stories and experimenting with new mediums or post styles. You know, it's something I haven't talked about today, but experimentation is part of business. As frustrating as it is. Some strategies work, some don't. You've got to try things out. We had a client who um, was trying a promotional strategy in the last few weeks, and she was kind of frustrated because it didn't work. And the learning was, well, it didn't work. That's fine. Let's not do that. But it's great to try. It was good we tried that because sometimes we try things that we may think might work or not work, and it does work, right? So that's going to be part of it. And unfortunately, you can't just figure out a strategy of growing your following or your business and just do it forever. Unfortunately, over time, things change. So whatever you're doing now that's working to grow your following or to monetize your audience might not be working in six months. So that's something to be very aware of as well. Hey, Heather, hey Heather um, consistency in having an email freebie. There we go. Um, and offerings for community. I love that. You know, definitely when you get these larger followings, you can definitely consider these more of these education-based offerings because you have built, you have a level of trust with your audience and you often have a big audience of creatives within that too. Um, engaging with people who are participating in creative challenge prompts. Oh, I love that one. That's so, 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 so powerful. It's a, it's a really good thing. We've seen a lot of people grow their followings quite significantly through challenges as well. It also builds expertise and trust um, with your audience as well. Michelle sharing, connecting with other creatives as well as your followers. Yeah, I love that. So, so powerful. Look, I know I've shared a ton of information. My voice is almost out of, out of, uh, out of speed, but um, what I would love to do is just spend 10 or 15 minutes jumping into some Q&A. Um, just before we do that, I'm going to share again just that link again for the survey, as I mentioned, if this is something you're interested in and potentially getting on a call, a freebie call with myself or one of my team to share some tips and ideas and things, um, fill that form in. Everyone that fills it in will also send some, some business tips too as well, um, even if we don't jump on a call with myself or Paul from the team. So do click that. You can do it later. You don't need to do it right now, but at least have it open if you're interested. Cool. Question time. Is there any questions? So what, what I would love to do is if you can just write a um, write the question in the chat and then I'm actually going to dive into that. Now I do have one question. Julie, I've got your question that you sent to us. So um, I will jump into that and talk about licensing to start with. But what we'll do is if anyone else has a question you want to ask, can you just type it into the chat? It could be related to what we talked about today. It could be unrelated, an extra tip, or it could even just be an ask of the group here as well. This is a group of people who have these big followings, something that you're struggling with. Um, so Julie, I know you sent in um, before in, in the DMs to us basically saying, you know, how, what are some tips around getting licensed if you haven't done that before? 
Um, and yeah, what can you do? So, so first of all, just give me a wave if you've, if you've done licensing, right? If you've got some licensing deals. Is there people here that have? I know there's a few people in here. Fantastic. I love that. So, so once again, some of those people, if you want to share any tips around for Julia and other people here, feel free to pop something in the chat. Um, but I'm going to share some key tips around this. What I tend to see, people that want to gain licensing agreements or gain licensing deals is they kind of sit back and wait for it to happen. And it can happen. We've seen it. We've, you've got these bigger followings. People may reach out directly to you and say, hey, you've got this big following. Would you be interested? But once again, one of the big challenges in business is that people don't know you exist. So there is a lot of licensing opportunities out there. So part of it is, yes, you doing some of the legwork there and doing actually the outreach. So some organizations, you've got to spend a lot of time Googling to find them. Again, there's kind of often no easy way to do that. There's a few different ways you can do it, but find the information of these people and then actually just email them. Right? It's like, is it as simple as that, Logan? Yes, it can be. We've seen people do cold email strategy and get licensing deals and other ways to work with people as well. And just a tip there, I've already mentioned it. Make sure you mention your following in those emails. Now, cold email feels like a pretty like ugh, salesy strategy. The reality is it works. It's just a numbers game. So what we tend to see is that if you send cold emails to potential clients or people you want to license with, the reply rate is going to be pretty terrible. <laughs> it's going to be 10 to 20% of people you email will probably reply. When I say reply, I'm not saying that they will agree to work with you or licensing your artwork. They might just reply saying, hey, I'm not interested. Please take me off this list. Right, that could be the answer. That counts as one. But what we do see is that if you do this consistently, it can and does lead to opportunities. It just takes time, right? So you start off with, here's one cold email, getting a template together, learning a bit about cold emailing, and then you can take action around that. And you might just go, well, okay, I'm going to sit down for half an hour every week for as long as I can. I'm going to send 10 emails every single week. Great, like 10 emails. Well, if you do that for the next 10 weeks, may seem like ages, there's your 100 emails. You're probably going to get 10 to 20 people will respond and you might have one, two, maybe even three licensing possibilities or opportunities to work with people out of that. All right, and there we go. Jessica's um, shared a, a guide to cold email outreach freebie if anyone's interested as well. All right, so you can DM Jess. Um, maybe Jess, just drop your Instagram again so people can DM if they're interested in that. Um, well, there we go. You're all over it. You've, you've put the link in. I love it. So, so good. So look, the, you know, these, these are things to think about. He says other ways you can do it. Sometimes it's not cold email. Sometimes you've got to fill in forms or applications as well. So Julia, I'd spend some time digging around, seeing if you can start to find this, but start giving it a go. Remember, it starts with one cold email. I know it can be overwhelming to see 10 in one week for some people, but start with one and then move from there as well. Awesome. Okay. We do have some more time for questions. What questions have we got? If anyone's got a question, can you just pop it into the chat? Happy to answer questions. It could be related to what we're doing, uh, what we've covered today. It could be related to other things. Awesome. <laughs> Copyright infringement. We're going to jump into that one, Drita, because I think that's a really interesting one. I'm sure we've all had to deal with it. Anyone have advice on how to approach it with lawyers, with successful outcomes? Hey, if you've had some experience in this and you're open to sharing something, Erin, do you want to just pop it in the chat? So um, Erin and anyone else, if you've got some tips you want to share, just pop it into the chat, because this here is such an interesting subject. Uh, and it actually becomes a bigger subject, unfortunately, when you have these larger followings. Larger followings mean you're more likely to have your work copied. And I get it. That can be super frustrating as well. Now, we have worked with people. We've seen people who have successfully actually worked with lawyers and actually had things either removed or in some cases actually had compensation deals um, paid to them, which can be good as well. It can be incredibly Oh, stressful trying to get a compensation agreement from an organization. Though the starting point often is actually just to contact them and let them know that you've come across their work, you've come across their product, it is your artwork or a similar likeness to your artwork, and you, you're requesting that they take it down. Right, so that's actually the easiest first thing. You don't need to pay a lawyer to do that. You could pay a lawyer to do, it, do that. Lawyers are expensive, so that's something to be aware of, but the first point of call is to do that. Sometimes people just stupidly unaware of this stuff. They don't realize that they shouldn't be doing this. Now, yes, actually a lot of the time that's not the case. And some people, obviously ignorance isn't enough, but it does actually happen where people are like, oh, I didn't even think about that, right? They're, they're thinking about other things 
in terms of how they can utilize their skills and abilities and they're basically kind of copied your artwork. Okay, so that's the first point of call. And also maybe even if they were like, well, I'm just gonna do that, at least at that point, they should take it down. Now, obviously it's something you need to be aware of. You could still pursue them, but what is the energy you're gonna put into lawyers and stress of dealing with this? And how does that balance with you moving on and focusing on other things? So I'm not gonna go into details around that, but if you do wanna share some more on that thing there, um, it can be something there. And the biggest thing that I see is that people get very, very stressed about it because it's terrible having someone copy your work. We just need to balance that with what we can do about it. And, um, you know, I've even got a couple of friends who have, they've, they've just got a lawyer and if they see it happening, they just forward it to their lawyer and say, hey, I've seen this, can you deal with this? And they've got agreements with the lawyers in terms of what that looks like. Maybe if there is a settlement, their lawyer gets a percentage, for example. So there's not a cost up front with that lawyer or not a significant cost, but the lawyer can pursue that or at least start um, looking into whether it's worth pursuing. Right, so it's something to think about around that. It's, it's a big subject as well. And um, if anyone else wants to share anything around that, feel free to fire it into the chat. Cool, what are some examples of premium-based offerings? So just looking at your, oh, besides courses there, Jessica. Awesome, so, so this is premium-based offerings. Once again, I, I'm using semantics to describe this. People use, some people say, well, a premium-based offering is $1,000 plus, like I've defined it for all of you. Some people not, might say, well, everything I do is $1,000 plus, Logan. So it's going, well, what is something that you could do outside of the normal stuff? What is something premium above that? And for example, we've worked with a lot of muralists who actually might charge $10,000. That's the minimum, right? We've seen people do that. Or we've seen people who are muralists who have smaller offerings that are one to $5,000, but then they can do a premium offering that is a higher amount. So that's something that we're seeing works really well as a really high ticket premium type offering these days. We're seeing a lot of success for people who are getting into murals. Um, just, just remembering that you could even consider just designing the murals and have someone else do the physical painting. We've seen that before. We've worked with clients who have actually done the design, but then not the physical actually artwork the painting component because they don't want to they're not interested or it's just not something they're able to do because of location or their health or you know their their other commitments they have in their lives business family etc so that's definitely something you could certainly consider um what what we tend to see is everyone's different in terms of what they can do so i know you mentioned not courses um jess but just reminding everyone here that is something that you could do and think about if you were to offer a program a course something that was $1,000 plus could even be $5,000 plus just a brainstorm about around what that can be okay so as I mentioned already we did have a client who had this $1,200 um, course it was there's lots of ways to do courses it can be pre-recorded it can be live it can be one-on-one -on -one, uh, it can be group there's lots of different ways to do that but that's something you certainly could consider as well um, in terms of other premium offerings we've other, we've also seen things like packages so grouping bunches of your current offerings together can be defined as a premium offering so that's another way to think about it is basically it's like a it's more of a like a bulk deal which is like you can work with me and do this you can work with me this or you can work with me for everything i do or a whole bunch of different packages so um that, that's something to consider also premium offerings tend to involve more of you more of your time so another example we've already mentioned is retreats, right? Retreats are actually a good example of a premium offering, but it's fairly involved, right? It's a lot of my time. It's a lot of Kat's time. I've got some other partnerships we're talking about. Hopefully we are launching some more retreats soon. Um, but this is an example of a premium offering. Now it doesn't have to be a full on retreat in, in Europe or another country. It could actually be just a weekend retreat more locally, or it could be a one-on-one -on -one day with you. Right, so maybe it's not so much a course, but it's someone joining you for a day to learn from you, to experience your life and your business, those things there. Someone might actually pay a premium to experience that. Right? If you are someone that does murals, like what if there was a super fan who could come along and help you do some of the murals? And they're not going to be doing complex stuff, but they'll be doing some basic things. You might actually be able to charge them for that. Or maybe you run a competition where it's a freebie giveaway as well. So that's something you could consider doing. It's about getting creative. And you know, I would, you're all creative people. So I would start with a number on a piece of paper and say, what, like, 
even though I don't, I don't want to do it, what would, what could I do using my expertise and my skills that I would charge $1,000 or $10,000 for? Even the most ridiculous ideas, put them down because they might lead to a really interesting idea as well. Love it. So, so fantastic. Look, um, love seeing a couple of other things being shared here. Thank you, Erin. So many good things you've shared in the chat there and really valuable. I just love seeing the community side of people sharing within this. We are going to be wrapping things up in the next couple of minutes. I appreciate you for all being here. It's just been lovely seeing you all can, and connecting. Hopefully we'll be able to chat in the DMs or by emails and things like that. We are going to send out a recording to this afterwards, including that link to the survey. If that's something that interests you, I'd love you to check that out. Um, people find that really helpful as well. Hi to those of you that we're currently working with uh, or uh, have worked with in the past as well. It's lovely to see lots of familiar faces and other people that have had conversations on calls with as well. So just to wrap up, I would love everyone to share one takeaway from today. What is one thing that has been helpful, interesting, useful, surprising? Maybe there's an action here or something you've learned. Just share one thing, anything around any of those things, a bit of a takeaway. If everyone can share one thing in the chat, that would be absolutely fantastic. I love it. Oh, I love it. Awesome, Katie. New ideas. New ideas are good. This is part of building and growing a business as well. Yeah, awesome. Blue check mark might be a good thing to explore. Uh, Kenzie thinking about valuable and premium offering strategies. Love that. Kenzie, so many good things to think about around that. I'm not relying on Instagram too much and reach out to clients. Julia, love it. Fantastic. Um, and, you know, de-risking your Instagram following is a big part of that too. Action item, yes, I love it. Start thinking about the premium offer for sure. And it's it's once again that situation where because you've got, you know, well over 10,000 followers, this is something you consider. Even if five people pay for it and it's $1,000, $2,000, that's amazing. That's actually suddenly bringing you in five or $10,000 in the next few months or the next year. Even if it's just something you offer once a year, it could be a great boost. It's a really awesome thing that shows value. So even if people don't spend the money on that, they still see that you're offering these valuable things and you do something that's really cool. Maybe they can do that in the future. Erin sharing, don't currently have a premium offer and brainstorming course ideas around protecting your business legally. Erin, you've already shared a bunch of great tips there and I'm sure everyone here found them very useful. So I think that's something really excited to dig into for sure as well. Premium offering and art retreats, Heather. I love it. Sounds really good. Um, and uh, uh, she experimented with new types of offerings outside of illustrations as well. Hey, it's been so lovely connecting with you all. I've loved seeing everyone's faces. We're going to wrap things up there. As I said, this will be recorded and hope to connect with you all on DMs, maybe some calls and all those good things as well. Have a lovely rest of day and take care and we'll catch up soon. Take care, everyone.